Hello everyone, before we start the lecture today, here's one video that I want you to watch. This happened on November 1st in the NFL game. If you are an athletic trainer for this team and you are in charge of this game, what do you think of? What do you suspect the most and then what do you need to do next? If you're thinking that I suspect possible cervical spine injury and I'd like to spine board this patient as soon as possible, that is absolutely correct. This particular athlete sustained a cervical spine injury, required a surgery on the very next day and expected to recover fully, but our big topic to attack for the day is spine boarding. As you probably learned in a couple different classes previously, in case of an emergency when you suspect a cervical spine injury, there are so many different techniques that you can use to transfer the patient to the spine board. Some of the techniques would involve in the lifting of the patient and sliding the spine board underneath. And in some other techniques, you will roll your patient and try to slide a spine board underneath. So the question is, how can we determine which will be the best techniques for us to use? So we have two learning outcomes of the day. First one is when you have in a patient that is laying in prone position, which rolling way will be the best? Should we try to push or should we try to pull? The second one, depending on the situation, when you suspect a cervical spine injury on a patient, I want you to be able to assess the situation and try to determine what will be the most appropriate technique for us to use. Let's review what is out there first of all. So, according to NATA position statement, Acute Management of Cervical Spine Injured Athlete, which, one, uh, which is published back in 2009, this is what they say in this particular position statement. Section 19, for spine athlete, lift and slide techniques such as six plus person lift or straddle lift and slide technique will be better to use compared to the rolling technique because that is going to cause too much spinal motion. For prone patient, you need to remember to perform log roll technique and then for this particular position statement, it doesn't specify which rolling method push or pull is going to be the better one. It just said you need to roll them. Okay, so when you are assessing the patient, the most important thing for you to think about is going to be the position of the patient. If the patient is laying in a supine position, you need to perform lift and slide technique. If the patient is laying in a prone position, you need to perform log roll technique. Simple enough so far, right? But as I said before, this particular position statement is released back in 2009, which is about six, seven years ago. So there is a current document that NATA is working on right now in conjunction with many different other organizations. They're trying to develop a new consensus statement on how to handle um, the spine injured athletes. So they have released a couple different executive summaries of the document that they're working on right now. And it seems like some of the things that they're saying that they're going to include in this particular consensus statement is something like this. It says that spine injured athlete patient, we need to use eight person lift technique. And they're saying that the rogue roll technique is going to cause too much motion. And there are multiple studies that's saying that we really should stop trying to roll the patient if you're looking at the spine position athlete. That technique should be eliminated. It's not an option anymore. And if you're thinking that the eight person lift, I never heard of this, this is something new. This is the exact same thing as a six plus lift, it's just that we're trying to enforce a new terminology. Because six plus lift is kind of vague, how many people are we, am I gonna need? Is it six and something else? If you say eight person lift, it's very obvious that you're going to need eight people to correctly perform this technique. So here's a picture of people that are performing eight person lift technique. One person is in charge of the head, stabilizing the head, three people on each side to lift up the patient, and one person having a spine board and trying to slide it underneath. From the different picture, we have one person at the head, three on each side, and one person with the spine board who is going to slide the board in. When you are looking at the patient who is in a supine position, you suspect a cervical spine injury, you have to use eight person lift. Let's try to forget the name six person lift. That's the name that we try to abandon at this point. We're going to go with eight person lift because that's more clear terminology that we all should be using. So the question is, what if the patient is in the prone position? As previously mentioned, the technique that we need to use is the log roll technique. And then there are two different kinds. You can try to pull, you can try to push. So the picture that you see on the top, it's showing the rogue roll pull technique. 
one person is stabilizing the head, three people attempt to roll the patient, and one person with the board. So this particular patient is going to be rolled towards themselves, towards the rescuer here. And this particular person with the spine board is going to push the spine board between three rescuer and a patient and continue to roll the patient onto the spine board to secure them. Here's the same technique with a little bit different picture. Okay, Rolling towards themselves and try to put the spine board in the middle. The pictures on the bottom is showing you the rope rope push technique, which you have one person stabilizing the head, um, the spine board is going to be the opposite side of the rescuers, and then these rescuers are going to grab the side that's near to them, and they're going to push the patient away from them, push it towards the spine board to secure them on the board, and here's also another picture looking at the same technique, trying to push them away this way. So the question is, we'll, we'll pull and push, which one is actually better? Which one is actually going to cause them less spinal motion? And there's a definite answer to this one. There has been a couple different publications comparing these two techniques uh, using the fresh cadavers. And those studies are consistently saying that the rogue roll push technique is going to produce less motion compared to the rogue roll pull technique. They're saying that both techniques actually is going to cause pretty good amount of motion. It's not the ideal way. Okay, with the rolling, we, you, you're going to move the spine anyways. But which one is the less of the evil? Well, the log roll push technique is going to produce less motion compared to the pull. And this particular piece of evidence is going to be included in the new consistent statement as well. It's going to be stated that in case of a prone position patient, you need to use the log roll push technique, not the pull, because that's the safer, safe, safer technique for us to use. So again, going back to the answer, which one is actually better? Well, you're going to have to say, based on these evidences, push technique is better than pull. So that's going to be our definite answer. If you have a patient that is laying in the prone position, we need to consider using the push technique, not the pull. So here's a quick quiz time for everybody. I want you to take your moment and then think about what would be the best answer. Okay, If you are to spine board someone and the athlete is laying in a supine position, and prone position, what technique would be the best to use? If you need to pause this video and think about it, please do, if you're ready to see the answer. And so here is the answer. For supine position patient, eight person lift is the best technique for us to use. If you select a six plus person lift, that is not going to be the correct answer, even if it's the exact same techniques, because that's not the name that we're going to go with anymore. Okay? Please remember that we're going to call that technique eight person lift. The athlete that is in a prone position, the correct technique is going to be the rogue roll push technique. Okay? Again, according to several different researches, rogue roll push technique is going to cause less motion compared to pull, so that's the technique that we should be using. Hope this video was very helpful for you to be able to determine what technique will be the best to use depending on a situation, depending on a patient's position. Here are some references. If you have any questions, let me know.